is a company undergoing transition. On this edition of Test Drive, the first fruit of that labor. This is the all new ILX. The ILX is entering what is rapidly becoming an emerging segment, one that is likely to grow if the cost of gas continues to rise. There are many potential purchasers that want luxury, but also want to tone down the cost of operation. Now, ultimately, this involves downsizing. The ILX, along with the likes of the Buick Verano, is designed to cater to this change in taste. An Acura wouldn't be an Acura unless it was loaded with amenities, and this ILX is no exception, especially if you go with the technology model. When you do that, 360 watt sound system, navigation system, heated leather seats, power moonroof, and a noise cancellation system that actually helps to keep the cabin quiet. The one thing, however, that struck me most, the number of buttons on the steering wheel. Believe it or not, 16 functions, plus the paddle shifters and the horn, and that doesn't count the fact that you've got to steer with the steering wheel. If you've got a button fetish, you've got a fan. The base Acura ILX is powered by a two liter four cylinder that puts out 150 horsepower and 140 pound feet of torque at 4,300 RPM. As with Honda's other engines, this one is as sweet as a nut. It revs freely and it does not get noisy in the process. It is paired with a five-speed automatic transmission that features a manual mode and paddle shifters. The hitch is that it could do with a six-speed, one that would drop the rev rate on the highway while allowing closer ratios for first through fourth gears. The good news is, well, functionally, it's better than the CVT and the ILX hybrid. If the two liter engine isn't quite enough for you, there's always the larger 2.4 liter. They essentially lifted it right out of the Civic SI and dropped it under the hood of the ILX. It really does amp up performance, but there is a slight hitch. You cannot get a manual transmission with the two liter engine. You cannot get an automatic with the larger 2.4 liter engine. Both engines demand both transmission choices. I hope Acura gets the message soon. When it comes to the handling side, the ILX is very nicely balanced. It delivers the ride comfort demanded of an entry-level luxury car without sacrificing the handling characteristics. The amount of body roll is minimal, yet it takes a pretty gnarly piece of road to upset the ride composure. It's a well-sorted setup that caters very well to divergent needs. The back seat of this ILX is very spacious and will accommodate two adults quite comfortably. A third is out of the question because of the very domed nature of the middle spot. Now when you get to the back end here, you'll find a nice roomy trunk, 12.4 cubic feet of cargo space and you get a fold down rear seat. You'll also find a backup camera and a true release for the deck lid, thank you very much. The disappointment, these hockey stick style hinges they will crush anything placed beneath them. Now, if the ILX is on your shopping list, there is an important consideration. The base car comes with 205 55R16 tires. Now, they pale in comparison to the 215 45R17s that arrive with the premium package. When equipped with the lower, wider profile tires, the ILX displays much less understeer, and the response to steering input is faster and certainly crisper to the feel. On that note, the steering could do with a tad less assist. While it's not vague by any means, a little more weight in the feel would make the ILX feel so much sportier. If this is a harbinger of things to come, Acura's future looks a lot brighter than it did six months ago. This car is comfortable, it handles nicely, a loaded interior, and it's got a good balance between power and performance, especially if you go with the larger 2.4 liter engine. All in all, not much to complain about other than the fact that Acura needs to rethink those transmission choices.